In the previous video tutorial, we saw how we would go about calculating minor pressure losses at pipe inlets when the velocity in the pipe here was known, and we're going to call that U2. The challenge we face in this example is we don't know the velocity U2, and all we're given is the density of the fluid, 825 kilograms per meter cubed, and the elevation of fluid in the header tank, Z1, of 6.5 meters. So what we're going to need to do is apply Bernoulli's equation, but we're going to need to account for the fact that we don't know the pressure loss at the inlet, and we also don't know the velocity of the fluid. So if we begin with position one, we can see that the vessel is open to atmosphere, therefore the gauge pressure is zero. We also said in a previous tutorial that when we have a vessel of static fluid, we can assume that the velocity in the vessel, u1, is approximately equal to zero. So the only term from the Bernoulli's equation that applies to position one is the term rho g z1. Now if we look at position two, we can see that at position two, the pipe once again is exposed to atmosphere here. So P2 is also going to be zero. If we take the center of that pipe as our datum, then we can also see that Z2 is going to be zero. Therefore, the only term that applies to position two is rho u2 squared over two. But we're also going to take account of our pressure losses. And if you recall, our pressure losses need to be applied to the right hand side of our Bernoulli's equation. Now, as we're only going to be taking account of the pipe inlet losses, we're going to replace pressure loss with the formula on the left hand side, K rho u bar squared over two. So we have K rho u bar squared over two. So let's take a look at what we know. Well, we have the density of the fluid, we know gravity and we know the elevation. So we know everything on the left hand side of this equation. Moving to the right hand side, we know density. We don't know U2. K is the resistance coefficient. And in this first example, we're going to be looking at a square inlet here. And a square inlet has a resistance coefficient of 0.5. So in the bottom left hand corner, K equals 0.5. Now it's important to point out that u bar and u2 are not the same because u bar is the average of the two velocities either side of the feature. Therefore in this case, u bar is u1 plus u2 over two. Well, we've already said that u1 is zero, so u bar is just half of u2. As mentioned previously, the problem we still face is that we don't know what U2 is. So we have two terms involving U2. We have a term here, which has U2, and indirectly we have a term here, which involves U2. Now before we substitute U bar, we're going to make a couple of simplifications. And the first simplification that I'm going to do is to times each side of our equation by two. So if we times the left hand side by two, we're going to get two rho g z1. Our next term multiplying by two is just going to be rho u2 squared. And our third term is just going to be k rho u bar squared. Now the next simplification I can do is to divide each of those terms by density. It's entirely up to you how you approach this. You may prefer to plug in the numbers first and then simplify. For me, I prefer to simplify first. So dividing by density, this disappears, this disappears, and this disappears. And we're left with 2gz1 equals u2 squared plus k u bar squared. So we know that u bar is u2 over two, therefore u bar squared is just u2 
over 2 all squared. Well, u2 over 2 all squared is the same as u2 squared over 4. It's important to note that if we're squaring the top of that fraction, we also need to square the bottom of that fraction. Now this is going to enable us to simplify our formula further because we have 2gz1 equals u2 squared and now we're going to replace u bar squared with u2 squared over 4. So we have k u2 squared over 4. So now we have one equation and we only have one unknown. Now here is where the slight trick comes in. In one of the early maths tutorials, we looked at something called collecting like terms. And we can see here, we have u2 squared, which is the same as just saying one lot of u2 squared. But we also have k over four lots of u2 squared. This term here, we have k over four lots of u2 squared. Well, if we imagine we have one lot of u2 squared in one hand, and we have k over four lots of u2 squared in the other hand, when we bring them together, what we have is as follows. 2gz1 equals 1 plus k over 4 lots of u2 squared. So we've taken the 1 that we had in our left hand and we've taken the k over 4 that we had in our right hand. And all we've done is we've combined them, we've collected like terms. And that's a necessary step in order for us to find the value of u2 squared. Now I'm going to move our simplified formula to the top of the page and then we're going to look at the value of u2 when we have the square inlet as shown. And we're also going to look at the value of u2 when we have an inward projecting inlet. Okay, so we said that for a square inlet, k equals 0 0.5. So we have 2gz1 equals 1 plus 0 0.5 over 4 u2 squared. Well we can simplify this a little bit further we have 2gz1 equals 1 plus 0.5 over 4. Well 0.5 over 4 is the same as 0.125 so we're going to get 1.125 u2 squared. Our next step in rearranging this to get u2 on its own is to divide each side by 1.125. So we get u2 squared equals 2gz1 divided by 1.125. But it isn't u2 squared that we want, it's u2. So we need to square root each side. So we can square root our right hand side and we can remove our squared from our left hand side. All that's left to do is to plug in our values of g and z1 and we get u2 equals the square root of 2 times 9.81 times 6.5 divided by 1.125 and note that it's the square root of all of that fraction giving us a value of u2 for a square inlet equal to 10.65 meters per second. So with the square inlet, the velocity of the water in the pipe is 10.65 meters per second, and we've taken account of the pressure losses there. So when k equals 0.5 for a square inlet, that gives a velocity u2 equal to 10.65 meters per second. So next, we're going to investigate the inward projecting inlet. So on our diagram, we know that an inward projecting inlet would look something like this, meaning the fluid needs to travel round and into the pipe like so. And the resistance coefficient for an inward projecting inlet is higher, 0 0.78. Therefore, the pressure losses are going to be greater. So for our inward projecting inlet, let's calculate the value of u2. 
So our simplified formula still applies because we're yet to plug in the value of k. So we have 2gz1 equals 1 plus the new value of k, 0 0.78 over 4u2 squared. Or 2gz1 equals 0 0.78 over 4 just equals 0 0.195, but we need to add 1 to that, so that gives us 1.195 u2 squared. Next, we need to divide each side by 1.195, so we get u2 squared equals 2gz1 divided by 1.195. We don't want u2 squared, we want u2. So we square root our right hand side and we square root our left hand side. We can plug in our values. We have the square root 2 times 9.81 times z1 which was 6.5 all divided by 1.195. And we said to note that it's the square root of all of that giving us a U2 value equal to 10.33 meters per second. So when the pipe inlet is inward projecting, that yields a U2 value equal to 10.33 meters per second. And as we expected, that's lower than when we had the square inlet because the resistance coefficient and hence the pressure loss with an inward projecting pipe is greater.